Pulse School on realairculture.com is brought to you by Saskatchewan Pulse Growers, DuPont Ferguson Fungicide, and Nodulator XL. My name is Rory Cranston and I'm a Regional Crop Specialist with the Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture and Outlook Saskatchewan. And I'm here to talk to you today about our nodulation assessment. We use uh, different plant characteristics to assess the quality of our effectiveness of nodulations in pulse crops. Now I'm talking about nodulation assessment, but what we're really interested in is nitrogen fixation. Legume crops have the unique ability to form a symbiotic relationship with bacteria in the soil called rhizobium. These rhizobium have the ability to fix atmospheric nitrogen, which is what we're breathing right now is 80% nitrogen, and change it into a plant available form. They are able to have this relationship with pulse and legume crops where that the pulse crops feed them carbohydrates and, that the, and give the bacteria a place to live and the bacteria feed the pulse crop uh, plant available N. So really how do we assess uh, nitri or nodulation? What we want to first do is find out what time we go into the field is. So, Infection of bacteria into the pulse crop will take place in about the first two weeks after germination. Now, it starts then, but we won't have any nodules to assess by this point. Uh, when we do want to assess is about four to six weeks later when these nodules have had a chance to form. The first factor that we are going to look at is plant vigor. All these evaluations can be found in the Crop Diagnostic Handbook put out by the Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture. The first one we're going to look at is plant vigor. Uh, this is where we actually look at the crop as a whole. If it's uh, green and vigorously growing, kind of like the crop behind me here, that's a good chance it's going to be fixing a lot of nitrogen. However, if it's or yellow, stunted, uh, looking over to the crop just to the left of it, or here, uh, that's going to be a lower on the assessment scale. Next, what you're going to want to do is dig a plant out of the ground. And I cannot emphasize dig enough. Nodules are really loosely attached to the plants and can fall off really easily if you just pull them out. So get that shovel out and pull them out and dig them out of the ground. You're going to get a soil clod like this. If you just have some water, just dip it in there and tease and massage it off. And through the miracle of TV, we're going to speed up this part so it goes quickly. So, so now we have our clean root. And the second section that you want to assess the plant on is nodule number and color. If you're seeing nodules in clumps of greater than fives, that gives you a great potential for nitrogen fixation. Less than that, you'll definitely have less potential for nitrogen fixation. After this, you want to cut the nodules open. You want a healthy red color inside. The red color is created by lay hemoglobin, and most like uh, our human blood, hemoglobin, it's red because it means it's carrying oxygen and nitrogen into that plant. So that red color is, indicates that that nodule is working. If the nodule is green or brown, that means it's ineffective, not working, or possibly even parasitic. Next thing you want to look at is nodule position on the plant. The crown nodules and lateral nodules are the two positions. Crown nodules will be the nodules that are right around the seed area, right in the crown or right where the seed would be in the plant. And then there's lateral nodules that are off to the side. Crown nodules will often be created when a pulse crop is inoculated with a liquid or a peat uh, inoculate. Lateral nodules are most likely uh, come from native bacteria in the soil. Regardless, what you want is a high number of both. You want crown and lateral nodules. This will score you the highest on your uh, nodule position, followed by crown, then by lateral. What you want to do then is add all these values up at the end, and if you're getting 10 or higher, that means you have effective nodulation and a high potential for nitrogen fixation. Anything lower, 6 to 10, maybe something happened. Perhaps there's an inoculant failure or an inoculant was mistreated. Lower than five, something's wrong. Maybe there's a no inoculant in the soil. 
uh, no rhizobium, no bacteria, and nothing was inoculated, and potentially the crops a poor nodulator like dry beans or soybeans. Now I spoke a little bit about inoculant failure. There is two things that will kill bacteria faster than anything, and that's UV light and desiccation. UV light just penetrates it and kills the bacteria, desiccation and when it, is dry, when it dries out. So an inoculant failure can start or begin anywhere after the one the inoculant leaves the retailer or manufacturers. For example, at a retail, when product is moving quickly, they may keep the inoculant near a door in the sunlight, which is going to definitely end up in reduced populations. Uh, or in a farmer's field, a lot of inoculation with liquid inoculant goes on when it's going into the auger. So sometimes these inoculants get left in the back of the truck. So definitely there's going to be some UV light and some desiccation. Uh, so it's worthwhile to keep it in the shade, keep it cool. You want to preserve those live populations in the inoculant. Another question uh, that we have is seed treatments. Seed treatments are designed to kill microorganisms in the soil, so they can affect your inoculant. However, chemical companies and inoculant companies have foresaw this, and they have compatibility charts of certain chemicals and certain inoculants that work together. If you've checked your crops and you have seen that there is not a lot of nodules on there and you don't have a lot of nitrogen fixation potential, or perhaps there was an inoculant failure, it can be worthwhile to top dress with 50 pounds nitrogen. It will not be your optimum yield, but it will get you yield still. Another question that I get a lot with inoculants is can I mix inoculants, uh, say one third peat and one third, or two thirds liquid or two thirds peat, one third liquid? The answer is yes, you can, but be very careful of the strains you mix. You do not want to be mixing a Becker Underwood with a Novozymes product. They have different strains. You want to be careful to mix the same strain of product together. If you mix different strains, there's a chance that they could be competitive and reduce their own populations. Oh,